Well, I'll start with some good news. Looks like Howie's okay. Mm. Uh, we talked yesterday how Howie Mandel was rushed to the hospital in L.A. after he passed out at Starbucks. According to TMZ, he fell over before he was placed on a cement bench. Uh, people called the paramedics. He was alert by the time they showed up, but still taken to the hospital. Uh, hours later, he tweeted, I am home. I'm doing better. I was dehydrated and had low blood sugar. I appreciate the great doctors and nurses that took such good care of me. Thank you to everyone who reached out. I'm doing okay you think being at starbucks might cure that but yeah or maybe he just saw how much a uh, grande (laughs) pumpkin spice venti venti grande venti uh, was eight (laughs) bucks and just passed out extra whip drew took ivermectin and his uh, wife who took it prophylactically when Drew got it. That's why he was neighing when I passed him in the no, car. Oh, he was. Yeah, I thought he was like catcalling I me, saw him but... pulling his car. He wasn't driving it. He <laughs> oh, was interesting. pulling He was it. hitching himself to it. <laughs> One Drew power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so a little more info on the uh, situation over at Netflix since Chappelle's special dropped. Transgender Netflix employees plan to walk out of their jobs on October 20th in protest of the special. This comes after a trans software engineer named Tara Field was suspended after intruding on this executive's only meeting and speaking out against the special. Field has since been reinstated after finding there was no ill intent in her attendance. Um, she walked out and reportedly wrote, Trans Lives Matter, Trans rights matter, and as an organization, Netflix has continually failed to show deep care in our mission to entertain the world by repeatedly releasing content that harms the trans community and continually failing to create content that represents and uplifts trans content. We can and must do better. But net, but let me just tell you this. Netflix mm-hmm. CEO Ted Sarandos defended the special in an email to employees. <laughs> Which you don't hear very often. I do often. like the part where you're like the publisher and you have to explain to your CRM, yeah. fucking nut job 23 year olds have all been fucking brainwashed at college why they don't run the company mm-hmm. and why it's okay right. for you to publish this author or put out this comedy or special justify or justify how we your do business. business. Model, yeah. Good Netflix. I hope you're fucking eaten by your own woke lunatics. Have fucking fun dealing with the nut jobs. Because people don't realize there's a. I, Places like Netflix are super woke, but they don't realize that there's another strat of wokeness that they can't deal with. They can, they, well, you, everyone can go woke to a certain point, you know, as a business, you know, you can go, <clears throat> you know, we're going to switch to recycling stuff or recycling right. friendly and or we're going to put the commercial on during the Super Bowl. Right. We'll do, and we'll do a, a van share rides on Wednesdays and we'll, we'll, We'll we'll go and we'll we'll have a more diversity right. hires. We'll hire more women in positions of management and all. And everyone is pretty cool with that. Then there's the next strata. That's the crazy trans woke strata that they no business can deal with. You can never satisfy those people because they don't want to be satisfied. They're going to barge into meetings. They're going to start telling you how to program your network. And so even the woke places can't deal with the ultra woke of of their group but they deserve what they get so good have fun netflix with your wokeness well and and that's the thing we i've i can't remember if i've ever reported the last sentence being the uh ceo pushed back and said this is not your concern well you have to because there is no end to it so you you're gonna have to pump the brakes yeah there's a there's a thing where it's like well just comply with their list of demands but what if they just keep adding demands on what the list is a never-ending scroll of demands right yeah and that's very um it's not about ever being satiated it's about being disgruntled that's right. the group you're dealing with and you know who i who we deal with that on a daily basis with a six-year-old. Matt Fondelier. Oh. <laughs> and the, the, the six-year-old. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, you can't, then all of a sudden we're eating Jolly Ranchers yeah. for breakfast. Like, no, 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 no. Right. Um, but I got I do have to wonder, because this has come up in a bunch of his specials, why is Chappelle so obsessed with the trans topic? Why is that keep I, coming up? Listen, I don't know if he's a sort of P.T. Barnum mm-hmm. where he's just magically up, got yeah. the entire nation talking mm-hmm. about a stand-up special mm-hmm. because he's decided to drill down on something or he has thoughts right. that uh, he's not dealt with or wrestled with. I don't know what his past is, like who the hell knows no. what is burned into his psyche, but the the he is a 
He is a, I would call him a kind of a master marketer. I agree. Yes. And, and, and showman. In your two scenarios, I would say it's like a 20. Obviously, he has thoughts. He crafted jokes about these things, but it might be reverse engineered where it's like, oh, this is a topic that'll get people talking. This is this is a hot button topic. People are going to respond to this kind of thing. Or, or maybe he's, at, at some point, I guess when you get a lot of money, just like, hey, fuck it. I'm going to throw a grenade out there and see what happens. Well, how much would you have to pay for this? You know, let's just say Netflix dropped the special and then they were going to buy out some billboards or some magazine space or something like that. What do we, how much money is this by every talk radio right. show talking yep. about yep. it? Yep. And call to action, which is if you would like to join us in this conversation, you must go Pick home and side. watch it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. you right. got to go watch it. You can't even, you can't, it's like you can't argue over this food unless you've tried it. So go try it. Right. The only thing that comes to mind is uh, the president, the presidential campaign with Trump. You, you literally couldn't buy that amount of press with everyone right. talking about him. Right. And, uh, you know, think about think about Biden. Biden did nothing. He barely ran. He did nothing. He got more best. votes yeah. than any modern presidential right. election ever just simply on our discussion well, of it, you, you know, just that. whipping whipping everyone into it, right. into a frenzy, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I think he's uh I think he knows what he's doing. He found his he found that uh third he's rail. He's also he and for everyone he's he's a genius because not only does he do what he does, and then he just leaves the building mm-hmm. and watches us all just have a fist fight mm-hmm. and burn it down to the ground. He's in an Uber driving away, <laughs> lighting a cigarette right. while we're all getting in a fist fight right. over his art, right? He yeah. leaves the museum. We burn the museum down. Not only that, but here's the other part, and here's how the part of the genius of Chappelle. You don't see him pop up on the um, good morning this to explain himself to no. Michael Strahan. No, no, he doesn't right? do apology to her. Fuck that. It doesn't go anywhere. No. Does it? Because even even if it's not an apology to her, even if it's just an explanation, uh-huh. like, or even it's like, hey, I stand by my shit, you're still, you're still diluting it. You're yep. still, yeah. you're still watering it down. Yeah. He does what he does. He steps back. We don't. You don't see him. He would, you know, would pop up on the Breakfast Club or someplace or anywhere. Go on Tucker Carlson. Nothing. They would all have him in a second. He'll never pop up anywhere. Right. And all it does is keep us going more. Keep the mystique. Yes, and it's perfect. Yeah. No, you, that's a solid point. Um, somebody I I think wishes they had a little more mystique right now. John Gruden. Uh, uh, we know that he is officially out of the league after resigning uh, with the Las Vegas Raiders. And we, we know, email scandal. He's out, I think, of the Tampa Bay Ring of Honor. That is yeah, true. they took him out of the Ring of that Honor. That is also oh. true. Thanks for the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Retroactively. But somebody else catching a little friendly fire, because these emails, as they if they come to light, um, somebody else— Release them all. Well, Coach Jeff Fisher— is uh, has been thrown into the spotlight just a little bit. CBS reports that Gruden accused Fisher of succumbing to pressure by the league's front office oh, yeah. to draft Michael Sam. I saw Fisher's statement. I wonder where uh, it came I have from. it right here. Uh, he's the first openly gay player to enter the NFL draft. Gruden referred to Sam as a homophobic slur and wrote that the NFL should never have pressured Fisher into selecting Sam. But Fisher has a very reasonable response. He said that's not true. Michael Sam was the SEC co-defensive player of the year in 20. 2013, he was selected in the 2014 draft based on merit. Um, and yes, he is out of the ring of honor. I don't trust Fisher because he's <laughs> Cause one he of those guys. On, yeah. He has the glasses mm-hmm. that have the strap, but then break apart. Yeah. No good with bras, I no good with glasses. I don't feel like I don't feel like I've ever had glasses hanging around my neck and went, why aren't these in half? <laughs> <laughs> these are your I am supposed to get these. How am I supposed to get them back on my head? There's just two. <laughs> There's only one. What? Oh, it's like I I like like well, I'll see a guy with a fanny pack and go. While I may not rock the fanny pack, I get it. I, Makes sense. I get it. Up. I get what he's doing. I'll see the guy with the neck donut on the flight right. and I'll go. I forget mine sometimes, but I I get where he's at. Even the guy who had like the pager on his hip back in pager the day. Pager on his like, hip. Right, now not, not it's me, been but... replaced by the water bottle. <laughs> sure. The guy's walking around. Right. I go not for me, but I get it. But the guys with yeah. the glasses with the magnet in the two parts, i is it too constricting? Or maybe it's a safety issue. Like my father was killed when he walked by a grappling hook and it got hold of his chain. And that's <laughs> no, where they found I swore, him. never again. 
I mean, it's like a lizard's tail. Right. You know, it's like a safety uh, right. thing. Like in case you're doing archery. He's got the breakaway glasses, and all I think of is, what do you know that I don't know about glasses? Yeah. Ironically, the only place where that makes sense is for a head football coach who's got the headphones and the wires and the whatever. The rest of society doesn't make a ton of sense, but th- that could get hairy. Well done, Brian. <laughs> I, one I know. place. I, he wears them in practice. He's uh, not. See, he's, now I'm out. Uh, he wears <laughs> them into the it. office. He wears them into <laughs> hey, the practice. Gal- practice gal- like you play, buddy. <laughs> That's how you got hurt. What is it? What do they know? I don't know. I mean, they're not cool looking, but I like the idea. Everybody likes a magnet. But the front clasp bra is the bane of anyone's existence over an A cup. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I don't sign off on any of this either. Dawson thoughts about the glasses or that, the bra, and it's yeah. mag, they're magnetic, right? Yeah, it it, uh, it kind of strikes me as a person who wears a belt and suspenders. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't trust a man who can't trust his pants. <clears throat> uh huh. A little bit overkill. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, Fisher did that, <laughs> and also pants? sucked with the Rams. Uh, well, he's yeah. got overrated coach. He and Gruden actually were the two most overrated coaches in the last. Yeah, Fisher, definitely. I don't know about Gruden. I, well, I brought it up before, years ago on this podcast, but outside of that Super Bowl, <laughs> which was one with, he inherited a, a team with multiple Hall of Famers, multiple all-pro all pro defensive players. Mm-hmm. His record's pretty pathetic after that uh, Super Bowl. You know, the other thing, too, I'm looking at this. We're looking at a picture of him. He's got sunglasses and the breakaway glasses. Wow. You know, he... he he now needs two hands to put his glasses on, where yeah. if they didn't break away, he mm-hmm. could just use one hand. Mm. Mm. So Hold he may clipboard. be holding the play sheet in one hand. He's got to put down the play sheet to put on the glasses. Do you think and he wears his... The play sheet is blank. He wears his reading glasses like a prayer shawl. <laughs> Do you think the dude who wears his glasses on top of his ball cap sees... The breakaway glasses guy and gives him a knowing nod, oh. or is he his arch enemy? Oh, uh, ne- you know nemesis. what I mean? Yeah, his nemesis. nemesis. Uh. Yeah. Like it was like white dudes in Jeeps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe thumbs maybe up. it's a little thumbs up, or maybe. Or is it like Jeep guy seeing Range Rover guy? I mean, like, I or see like you. Army Navy, yeah. you know, big football game. Like, I thought you guys would be friends. Like, no, no. no, no. Far no. from it. Cross town rivals. All right, anyway, okay. I don't need the breakaway glasses. Don't Gruden and Fisher both have sons that are coaches? Yeah, Gruden's coach is staying on with the Raiders. Oh, really? That's uncomfortable. The son. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh I Gruden, didn't know I that. Gruden's coach on yeah. Gruden's son. Yeah, Gruden's he's, he's like, son. I think he's strength and conditioning, perhaps, but he's, he's on the staff. Right. Sounds about right. And who's the one with the, the fun howdy doody cut? That's Davis. That's, That's uh, the owner. owner. I got it. Okay. Because I was wondering why his picture kept coming up in this story. Now I understand. I was saying this. Uh, few days ago regarding his haircut mm. if we live in uh, Los Angeles plenty of people adopt like affectations yes. maybe an earring maybe a chain sure. a cane sometimes mm. a tire man bun things a beard the you know, and things like cool. that there's no end yeah now if you're Al Davis's son you own the team because your dad died right okay uh, why take on the simple Jack sort of haircut? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you overcompensate? Like, wouldn't you wear an ascot or, you know, pocket square or a three piece suit? Like, right. wouldn't you uh, put on a monocle or, or clear glasses, even if they weren't prescription? You know what I mean? Like, push, push back against the sort of simple dope who got the team, you know, because his haircut. Is like one, it's really, if somebody said, would you wear his haircut, if you were trying to impress an audience into, yeah. into thinking you were intelligent, would you rather wear that haircut or wind up beanie? Oh, I'd be what's like, the I got to think about this. Yeah. I got to think about is it. Is there, okay, we talked about the movie Room recently. Is there a situation, that little kid had never seen the outside world. Is there a world where, or a, a scenario where Mark Davis is the son of a very wealthy, very eccentric man and never saw, like, had no essence of a normal life and thinks this is just That's a A-okay? bit of a rich man, poor man. He lived, I think I was watching an expose on him or something. I think he lived with Cliff Branch for a so while. My, my point exactly. <laughs> but, like, in an apartment or something, I... He talks about his sort of hard scrabble upbringing, man of the people, hung out with the players all the yeah, time. So, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Hair. Yeah, he drives. Oh, that's a home cut for sure. 
He drives a 97 Dodge Caravan. I, oh, I think he's I think he's just he's he's doing what Dave Chappelle is doing at this no. point. Trolling right? us. Yeah, he's just having fun. Yeah, he's, he's having fun with us. He has to be aware that that is the worst haircut. And it's almost as if he's daring people. Go ahead. Say it. Right. Talk about my hair. We'll see how quick you last on this organization. He could pull off. He's got the exact same hair Gruden has. So if he wanted a Gruden sure. type haircut, he could he could pull it off. He does seem to have a wife who looks like a you know b- b- real housewife. That's on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The haircut's That's on her. her. Something yeah. to think about. Um, let's talk about. I wish I wish there was more space in between these stories, but there is not. We have another fan fight in the stands. Uh, this time, our home team, the Dodgers. Uh, They're fighting for their playoff lives against the Giants on Tuesday. Their fans in the stands just brawling, caught on video. I'll show you in a second. Uh, TMZ Sports reports that at some point during L.A.'s playoff game with San Francisco, several fans got into it on on a walkway, you know, know, just like the sidewalk in front of the the seats. The area between sections. Right. Um, So in the footage you're going to see— I don't want to sound like slippery slope guy, but if you— Go to school, I believe, you know, you go to Crenshaw High, Mm -hmm. they'll go, you can't wear red or blue. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got Crips and Bloods. Um, And you go, I got a brand new blue hoodie. He's like, sorry. Can't do it. Can't do it. That was a rule for sure at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Are we getting to the point now (laughs) with certain stadiums? Like, hey, Dodgers, when you guys are playing the Montreal Expos. (laughs) In 1987? In 1987. (laughs) Fucking knock yourselves out with the jerseys. But Dodgers and Angels, Subway Series. Maybe, because that's Orange County-ish. But if if we're going Giants, Dodgers, uh, everyone's just got to wear a fucking flannel. Well, I'm going to... We might get to the point where they just go, no rocking the jersey to come into the stand. We'll do... We're going to check for covid passport yep. and we're going to check if you're wearing a Giants jersey because we can't have the primary this. colors. I'm going to shed on your point a little because this seems like it was two Dodger fans. What? Wow. Yeah. God damn it. This led them to base- Dodgers are fighting Dodgers? Yeah. I'm going to show you in a second. There's haymakers. There's punches. They One of them wrestles the other to the ground. Finally, a security guard comes in and he has had enough. This is like a two minute clip so we're going to watch like 30 seconds of it. The meat of it. Whole thing. Here we go. Whole thing. <laughs> Here we go. Uh-oh. So, oh, pushing, yeah. punching. They're wearing the same hoodie. Throwing. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, he punched him when he was down. New guy came in. Wait, they're wearing the same hoodie. Like two, like, jacket. Sherpa denim jackets. Yeah, security drags security, him down, yeah. dragged the other guy down. And then they just now they, keep fighting they don't, that way. They don't mind. Security doesn't deter anyone anymore. It used to be the cops would show up. That was that was enough. Mm-hmm. They keep going. Him. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, intern in. Ryan, was at the game. Oh, fuck that guy. Next to the fight? Oh, I was right there. And I was wearing a Giants jersey. And yeah. And just got so booed, like, everywhere I was going. And I was, like, I was with a Dodgers fan who bought my ticket for my birthday. Mm-hmm. So it was the thing was, like, all right, well, you got to go do the beer runs, dude. So I'm walking with, like, you know, <laughs> carrying like three you. beers. And the, the my mask is on. And it's, like, coming up into my eyes. And, like, I'm just so vulnerable, like a little <laughs> wounded calf. <laughs> And and he the whole time is he speaks Who's Spanish than too. A cow. Yeah, he, <laughs> sorry, he, he speaks Spanish too. So he's talking to everyone and you know all the Latino people in the bleachers, and he's just like ragging on me. I have no idea what he's saying. Just instigating, he's inciting me. them. <laughs> yeah, great friend. I, look, I gotta be. Uh, I have a son. I would if he wanted to go to Dodger Stadium wearing a Giants jersey. I would probably say no. I'd mm. probably say that's not. You know, I'm not uptight. I just. Why get hit with a beer I can? Agree. I, I you don't just want to get Brian do Stowed. Don't get well, Brian well, Stowed. You're well, right. Game five tonight. Mark Davis goes to PF Chang six times a week. This is your hero. He's this my guy. hero. He doesn't have the breakaway glasses. And he goes to PF Chang six days a week. That would wreak havoc on your innards, but he can handle it. Suppos- supposedly he goes famously after losses too. So. Oh, to oh, eat so, his feelings. So he goes seven yeah. days a week. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right, let's do one more. All right. Well, this one, uh, this is for Brian. Hey. And a lot of people out there, if you're a fan of The Simpsons, 
I got a job offer for you. You might want to look into it. It's uh, PlaytonCasino.co.uk. This is interesting. They're looking to hire a Simpsons series analyst to watch the entire series and predict what other global events could happen in 2022. I should the series, apply for this. Yes. <laughs> the series has been credited with predicting the future over its 33 seasons. We've had Donald Trump being elected as president, Richard Branson going to space, um, some stuff with the coronavirus pandemic. The job lasts for eight weeks, pays six. 6800 bucks. It comes out to about 925 American? per episode. American? Actually, pound would be oh, stronger. Oh, even better. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's something you might want to look into. Well, it's interesting that... You sorry, know, honey, I'm working. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, Fondelier. <laughs> what am I talking to you for? Comedians, look, I was just doing with the uh, Jersey uh, boycott or the Jersey no-fly zone in the stadium. You know, comedians are supposed to kind of feel which way the wind is blowing and then jump ahead right. X amount of years. And uh, look, I wrote a book called 50 Years Will All Be Chicks 12 years ago. I got a feeling about where we were heading. So like uh, people that write comedy, that's kind of their job and yeah. sci-fi, you know, to just kind of jump ahead a couple of years and see where we might be. I said, Trump would be president in 2016. I was joking, but I, something made so me they, something sure. made me say it. Right. Like you get a you get a feeling. It's you know, it's kind of interesting if you know if the Pentagon can talk to sci-fi guys about what crazy and I'm not sci-fi per se, but thrill novelists right. who write Futurist. spy thrillers and right. stuff. I'm sure many of them had thoughts about planes going into right. the into towers uh, many years before the planes went into the towers. Well, there's probably a comedic version of this as well. Right, and there's, uh, I just looked it up, 706 episodes of The Simpsons. They're going to predict a handful of things. I was going to say. They're commenting on pop culture. Between you and The Simpsons, it's many hours of content being put out there. Can I I say this? Um, The, um, if I, if I talk to one of my underlings, because I've I've had this many times, and I said, uh, I need you to watch all The Simpsons and I need you to kind of predict the future. We're looking for things that may happen that could haven't happened yet. So just, you got it, just watch mm-hmm. it, write it down. If you see anything that's suspicious, tell me. They'd go, got you, boss. And if I check back in with them in a week, I'd go, what do you got? And they'd go, I think Aerosmith is going to go play most Tavern. <laughs> And I'd go. In fact, I can almost I'd guarantee go, it. No, no, and they'd go. Well, that's what you <laughs> yeah. said, yeah, right? And I'd up. go. No, no. I said to you. Said look at the episode, yeah. and then see what could happen. And I'm saying potentially Aerosmith right. could play Moe's Taver. Well, Ken Brockman could also take over the <laughs> right. national news. It's exact. There's no way we'd be one and done with these marching orders. There'd be another <laughs> long conversation about what we were trying to accomplish with this. That. I, I, that I can guarantee you that. I've had 2,000 conversations with people. They've never understood a word I've ever said. Dr. Hibbert's going to cure cancer. That's right. All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Caldera Lab. Dry skin, acne scars, wrinkles. You just want healthier skin. This is the product for you. The Good by Caldera Lab. Non-toxic natural serum made from 100% Plants, 100% from plants. Named by GQ is the best natural face serum for men. For all guys and all skin types, great with a beard, bald head, or a dry scalp. Keeps it shiny and moisturized. Caldera Lab believes you shouldn't have to decide between clean, sustainable ingredients and real results. Simply apply to dry skin and uh, make sure it's clean and dry. And then uh, go ahead and put it on. It goes on like Butter, baby. Try it 100% risk-free. If you don't love it, they'll refund it. Refund your money in full. It's Caldera Lab. Right, Dawson? Special offer for the Adam Carolla Show audience. 20% off your first Caldera Lab purchase of the good. Go to calderalab.com slash Adam. That's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B dot com. Or use discount code Adam at checkout. And I couldn't perform under the influence. Right. And I, I don't think Sam did either. Now, he might have gone on like I did mess up sometimes, fuck up, and you get on stage, and you're like, oh, shit, I didn't plan this one well. You know? Right. I mean, I had those moments, and you go, oh, shit. And I'd, I remember was once I was too little too drunk, and I ran into the bathroom. I actually called a break to the audience and ran in the bathroom, did some blow, and came back out. 